Portable disk drives are nothing new, but a portable network attached storage drive holding up to two SSDs for 16 terabytes total with on the go backup from CF cards, SD cards, USB drives, Wi-Fi and Ethernet connectivity and a built-in UPS battery, AI photo tagging and HDMI plus USB-C video output to play back videos. I mean, that's pretty cool. This is the Unify Drive UT2 and it's an intriguing product with a ton of features, so let's get into it. I'm James Bruce, you're watching windowsreport.com reviews. So what exactly is the Unify Drive UT2? Primarily aimed, I think, at on-the-go creatives, the UT2 offers portable fast backup of your media files. And essentially as a mini PC, you can connect to it from your phone and preview, browse the files, it can connect to your home network through a gigabit Ethernet port, but it can also act as its own Wi-Fi access point for others to browse and access and collaborate. It's a portable media player with HDMI output, so you can hook it up to a projector to play or preview your captured media on the go too. In fact, the USB-C port also offers video output, making it a media player for your AR glasses or personal cinema headset. As a network attached storage system, it offers a private cloud type functionality and will be able to run Docker containers, though you should probably set your expectations appropriately there. And I'll note that that feature is not available in the prototype that I have. The Unify Drive UT2 promises a lot. So the question is, can it deliver? And ultimately that comes down to usability. Now that I've got you excited, I'll give you a quick disclaimer. This is a Kickstarter product that I was sent for testing, though the video is not sponsored. I can only speak about what I've received and the features it does have. It doesn't feel like a prototype, it feels pretty ready to go, but I obviously can't make any promises about deliveries or production timelines. They are claiming a November shipping date for what it's worth. The company listed on the page, Unify Drive is a new company with an address that's actually just a third party that registers companies in the USA. But if you follow the team that's behind the Kickstarter, it appears to originate from a Chinese company called ZSpace, who already have a series of Chinese market only uh, network attached storage system products. And I think I'm right in saying that the UT2 is an upgraded version of their original T2 product. So I'm not seeing any particular red flags with the campaign. The hardware is clearly real, it works. It does mostly as advertised and it arrived in a branded box with all the sort of correct labeling, which is always good. So I think this one is safe and it's a case really of only using Kickstarter as marketing. But as with any Kickstarter, don't spend any money that you couldn't afford to lose should the worst happen, which at the time of writing, uh, the super early bird pricing is $400. But if you miss that, it'll go up to $500 and that's for the bare drive only. Okay, so first up, design about the size of a large phablet at 175 by 90 by 28 millimeters. The UT2 features a rubber bumper all the way around, which reminds me of the Lassie portable rugged drives, which I guess gives the impression it's more suitable for outdoor use. But with all these exposed ports, uh, I wouldn't think it was waterproof at all or dustproof. It's not. It might survive a little drop, especially given the use of solid state drives. But other than that, it's not really rugged as such. It weighs just under 400 grams with the bumper, or you can take that off if you really want, and it's 300 grams without. There's a ton of bits and bobs in the box, including a Type-C cable, which they're calling an 8K Type-C cable, uh, an Ethernet cord, HDMI also 8K, a remote control, batteries, and a power adapter. Internally, you've got an RK3588C, which is an eight core CPU with eight gigabytes of RAM, a G6010 GPU, and six trillion operations per second NPU for the AI features. Now, despite the Kickstarter claiming 16 terabytes of storage, uh, that's a maximum. So it's gonna depend on the SSDs that you put in. You can either have RAID 0 or RAID 1, but uh, I don't see a bundle option on the Kickstarter. The model we were sent included a 512 gigabyte SSD to test with. So obviously in terms of storage, you'll need to factor in your own M2 2280 size SSDs to the $500 bare drive cost. The SSD speeds top out at around 800 megabytes per second, while the SD card and CFE card access is around 312 megabytes per second. There's a power button on the front, a Wi-Fi button on the side, a backup button on the other, and various output and storage ports on the other side. 
as well as a USB-C power input here. Network connectivity comes either from joining the hotspot, joining your own Wi-Fi, or the Ethernet port. Uh, but while you're at home, and especially for config, uh, initial setup, that sort of thing, I would definitely use the Ethernet for reliability and firmware update. Now, everything you do with this is configured either through the smartphone app or the desktop via a web browser. Although I mentioned it does have HDMI output, that is strictly for the media player. More on that later. The smartphone app is pretty clunky and sometimes bad English, but nothing horrific compared to, say, other network attached storage apps. You'll always get the best experience with the desktop web browser access. So one big but basic feature, I think, is that the UT2 can act as a flash drive, i.e. you can plug it into your PC over USB-C uh, and then you can read and write to it, sort of. Now you do have to enable this feature and doing so means partitioning away part of the drive for use only as a flash drive. So on a technical level, it's actually creating a virtual USB device. You can't access through that the files you already have on the network storage. It becomes an entirely new drive, something separate. And it's even shown in the app interface as an external disk. Now you can access those files from within the app once you safely eject the flash drive from your PC, but your PC can't access anything other than what's on that specially formatted section of the drive bit weird and it still has to be plugged into power it won't draw enough over the USB-C data collection alone so you will need to plug in the USB-C power also because it's a virtual drive it's not actually going to be as fast as if you did have a USB flash drive so that's a little less useful than I might have hoped but could still be cool another major feature is what they called plug backup where you plug in any SD card or CF card or USB disk uh, press the button twice and it can copy. Again, although you need to enable this through the app, uh, you can configure it. So for instance, you can choose the folder to backup to and you can choose the behavior once you've completed the backup. So perhaps you just want to keep all the original files, that's fine, and then eject the disk. Or you can have it delete everything. It's pretty easy to use, but in the field, the only feedback you get is some beeps. So when you press the button twice, uh, it beeps twice. And when it's finished, it beeps three times. Unfortunately though, you can't set the save location for that as the previously mentioned uh, partitioned flash disk part. So it has to be done over the network being a network attached storage drive. However, it is pretty quick to copy and you can see the files appearing in the app. Uh, so you can preview them, see whether you got the shot that you needed or whether it was actually in focus without having to use the nasty interface on your camera. Perhaps your camera's charging or your cameraman's off doing the next shots already. So for me, this is probably the biggest killer feature and it worked exactly as described. I can see this being incredibly useful. The only downside to using this is the battery life. So I mentioned there is a battery inside of here, but I'll stress that that is strictly for use as a UPS. It's not really for regular operation. So there is a USB-C power socket here outlined in red and in standard use, you should have that plugged in. I think you need to provide sort of 35 watts minimum. So you will need to carry around a pretty good power pack with you. Now, I think any professional use of this, you're going to have a battery pack. The internal battery isn't that big and it will last about 30 minutes to an hour while doing file transfers. So with large video files, big SD cards, that might not be long enough to grab them all. During testing, I had about 150 gigabytes on the card. That took roughly 15 minutes. So to be honest, it's best to treat this as if it didn't have a battery. Uh, it's really only there for emergencies. If you accidentally pull out the power cord, then uh, it's gonna act as a UPS and ensure that there's no data loss. Okay, so moving on to media playback. With videos loaded onto the Unify Drive UT2, you can play things back over both the smartphone app uh, and over HDMI. There's even a sort of Plex clone app if you want to index TV shows, etc. but I didn't try that because it needs a API key. However, I tried four different random videos that I pulled off of my home server, two of which were full length movies and two of which were just short homemade things. Now, while everything could play fine through the iOS app, and I assume that's because it's using the native functions of the iPhone, 
Over the HDMI port, the output was less successful. Of the two homemade ones, one was extremely jittery uh, to the point of being completely unwatchable. The other one played fine, but of the two full length movies, one completely refused to play and the other wouldn't show subtitles, even though it did on the app. So yes, that was just some random testing, but don't expect a VLC-like universal compatible experience here. So for me, the HDMI or USB-C output as a media player is a bit of a miss. The last thing I tested was the AI Photos feature. Now this is something we've increasingly seen on network storage systems from the likes of Synology. And of course, something that Google Photos already offers in the cloud. So it's not particularly innovative, but I wanted to see how well it worked nonetheless. So I picked a random year's worth of photos from my archive and copied those over and then let it get to work. Again, this is a feature that has to be enabled and you have to download the AI recognition engine because it all runs locally. And I was pretty impressed here. It found faces and scenes accurately. Uh, I was able to use the natural search engine, uh, just type in any topic and it'll sort of look for that. But I'll stress that this is all local on the device. Nothing is being sent to the cloud for processing. So it's all done on here with the help of that built-in NPU. That said, I'm not sure I would want to store all of my photos on here. Uh, ultimately, this is just a portable device, not something I'm gonna use at home permanently. So should you buy the Unified Drive UT2? I've experienced a fair share of buggy behavior from the UT2 test unit. And in one case, I had to let them jump in remotely, diagnose it, then update the firmware to fix it. These are teething issues though to be expected with a Kickstarter product and I wouldn't ding them points for that. I'm pretty sure that'll all be worked out in time before release. Overall, I found the Unified Drive UT2 app can be a little bit unintuitive. For instance, it defaults to using IP addresses even though it actually broadcasts a link local friendly address with MDNS. So that's like ut2.local you can use as an address in your web browser and that'll work to access this. The fact that many of the standout useful features have to be manually enabled, there's no setup wizard uh, asking you or introducing, we have these features, do you want to use those? You have to delve in and look for them yourself. The software just feels a bit disjointed overall, like it's a set of disconnected apps. And the fact that the flash drive is a virtual USB disk that has to be separately partitioned off rather than just giving you access to your entire disk is gonna be confusing for a lot of people, I think. I know on a technical level why they did it. It's not really possible to have it the other way that you want it to work, but that's irrelevant from a user perspective. That said, I don't know of a better or more innovative product that does everything that this can do. It's certainly more of a niche product than I had hoped it would be coming into this review. But the one killer feature of being able to back up your SD card footage on the go is brilliant. I am definitely gonna make use of that. I regularly fill SD cards and wish there was some way to get that footage off easily while still being out in the field. The media player features for me are less impressive. And if you wanted this purely as a network storage drive for home use, I couldn't recommend it. But for the mobile uh, creative, assuming you have portable power and are happy to spend some time getting used to the workflows, getting it set up and configured the way you exactly want it to be, this could be just what you're looking for. So that's it from me. I hope this was helpful for you. Be sure to like it. If it was, let us know in the comments if it wasn't and what else you'd like me to talk about. Consider subscribing for more reviews, tutorials, news, and more from all of us over at windowsreport.com.